So career skills. So this was something where we got huge number of uh, uh, queries and um, I tried to limit them over here, but I also wanted to keep some of the interesting ones over here. And I do think that um, career and skills that are quite a wide domain for, especially for the most of you who are looking to um, uh, look or uh, learn on, on this trade of uh, algo and quant trading. So, so the first one was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, this one, uh, I want to know how did uh, rent, rent tech or uh, technologies earn such a hefty amount of money from the market and, and is that possible today? Now, the money that you make in any business, uh, it, it looks very straightforward and um, very obvious uh, in hindsight that of course that is what you're supposed to do. But that's only because those who made a lot of money already made that very clear that that was the uh, way to do. And uh, they have already exhausted those opportunities, right? So, so that's there. Now, that's what happens with um, uh, anything tech, right? anything on the uh, which is uh, tech heavy you will see that and um, renaissance technologies they I, of course no one knows uh, what exactly they did it's a secret sauce even the uh, big fat book which came in it uh, it just talks about the interviews with different people but not the guys who were at the helm of things right so they are not talking about jim simmons but uh, other guys uh, but in general um, for a business i think and uh, that's more relevant um, you need not look at how they made money because that's already done and uh, what they're doing they're all already doing and um, it might be a wrong place to start off with um, uh, challenging the incumbent in the thing by doing the very same thing that they are doing you have to do it something uh, in a different way if you want to uh, uh, make a mark or get into the industry now the thing is that for any business and um, it's true not just for trading but for anything uh, you need to have certain competitive edges right so this is something that i repeat very often but i think i cannot repeat it often. so so um so if you have a business if you have uh, say you are into aircraft manufacturing business right so there will be a slight hint of technology and the patents that you will need to get in or get through at any point of time okay but is that all no there is a lot more than uh, than what you will um, uh, than that technology and the patents there'll be a lot more other competitive advantages that you will need leave aside the rocket uh, science business or aircraft business even the basic business like uh, a grocery business right so you need to have certain competitive edges in terms of what your what your placement is in terms of where are you based what geography you are in right uh, location of your shop right uh, what is your supply chain how what are your return terms right so how uh, what is your credit terms all those things and how many other uh, players are there in the same vicinity right all those things matter if you have one or one competitive advantage you might find it difficult to um, uh, to succeed especially if it is a uh, crowded or a competitive space if you have two you have a chance if you have three or four that's amazing if you have all of them you're goldman sachs right or a national rent tech right so so that's what um, uh, is there um, which is getting those competitive advantages now when it comes to trading what are those competitive advantages it can be the strategy right so basic strategy the uh, the core of the strategy or the things related to strategy that is what is your how is your infrastructure in terms of uh, testing the strategy how closely you are able to test your strategy so that the performance in the back testing mimics the actual market performance as well right um, what is the uh, what what are the execution algorithms that you have for your strategy right then there are other non strategy related things as well which is say how fast your trading uh, systems are or technology or access to infrastructure do you have high end infrastructure the kind of cost of capital that you are able to get money at all right are you able to uh, would you be able to uh, fight off with someone who is just uh, looking for peanuts or very small percentage of uh, uh, return because their cost of capital is very small right so are you able to compete them off 
do you have a good network in terms of uh, any changes any uh, new things which are coming in um, you are getting to know um, them through your network right uh, how well are you in terms of uh, your corporate structuring uh, whether you are uh, uh, some uh, entity which is more friendly to the taxation laws in terms of uh, uh, more tax efficient or not right um, how the back office and the risk management is being managed all how the uh, uh, the bank relationships are all those things matter right so you got to have the, ultimately the idea is that if you want to challenge uh, the biggies in the uh, in the market you need to acquire keep on acquiring more and more competitive edges through your own skill upgrade or through inorganic acquisitions or through um, by buying them whichever they right, way it is right so that's um, that's very uh, important so, so that's there and um, then the kind of skills that you need for algo trading are essentially threefold uh, to put it very plainly, uh, one is your statistics and econometrics, so which is uh, understanding of uh, statistics, statistical models, how uh, getting understanding of different, how to treat different time series, analyze them, as well as uh, using them for uh, uh, for the time series forecasting itself, or even for your volatility forecasting, or um, different like large gauge models that use for that. A lot of uh, essentially using statistics putting a hint of statistics into whatever you do and um, that is important why is that because once you have the power of statistics at your end your odds improve okay the odds of success of your strategy improves because till the time something is a hunch it's not backed by data it's difficult uh, to have faith on right so when the market becomes challenging and mind it it will be challenging at some point of time for you as a trader right um, if you have a model which is well tested statistically you, it will be far more easier for you to have the faith at that model as compared to having the faith at your hunch right your hunch might be more um, uh, precise or more accurate but if you're not going to have the faith at the challenging time you're going to you're going to uh, lose a lot, right? So, so that's the that's the that's the problem. So, statistics help you uh, solve that problem first and foremost. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, that is if you are not a believer in data. But if you're a believer in data, then of course, uh, it uh, uh, practically it also improves your odds of success, right? Um, second is uh, financial computing, which is uh, programming uh, languages as well as uh, uh, the overall understanding of the um, of the technology as well so technology would include your network um, uh, network management uh, systems all of those things as well so so that's important there um, uh, python as we saw is uh, the thing which uh, is more relevant for most of the traders right and um, next is uh, more on the lines of the quant trading in the financial markets Right, so different models, different trading models which are out there, and uh, having a good sense of uh, financial markets and the overall market microstructure. So, so these are the key things that you need um, to become an um, uh, algo trader. And of course, these are the basic groundwork that you have to do. After that, of course, you have to go deeper and deeper. Uh, but yeah, it's a good start. It's a great start um, if you get a uh, hang of those three things. Our part-time job opportunities exist for algo traders, so that was another um, uh, popular question, and especially given the context of COVID-19 uh, and the lockdowns and the work from home, which has been becoming more and more popular across the globe. But yeah, there are more and more opportunities which we are seeing, like in EPAT also, there are uh, opportunities which keeps on coming. I think there are 200 odd um, placement tie-ups um, across 12 countries. And uh, what we have seen is that most of the uh, people, uh, most of the firms, they are now offering work from home uh, for most of their profiles. So, so yes, I think um, that is um, uh, happening now. And the part-time job opportunities, they are generally more related to the research part of it um, than anything else. Because in part-time, it is less likely that you will be asked to create something which is uh, IP sensitive, intellectual property sensitive. Um, but uh, from the research perspective where you are working on a part of the problem, then yes, that is there. So 
so that's um, there and uh, another popular question is uh, non engineering background people can we reach a level uh, to be able to write algo code and i see a lot of questions also here on the chat uh, which is how much time does it take and uh, to pick python how much time will it take so the answer varies depending on your background if you are totally from a zero programming or um, um, zero uh, uh, background where you would have not worked on the symbolic logic or other things as well um, it's going to take time and effort and no amount of reading or watching something is going to teach you that it has to be hands-on right so you have to try things um, at your end uh, when it comes to languages now the good part is that um, it the new languages like python they are not as complicated as um, the previous languages like c++ right so they're wonderful languages c++ java all these languages are wonderful but uh, but for a non programmer they were a bit of a challenge to learn right to pick uh, python is a lot more simpler but it will take so from what we have seen uh, depending on how much time you are able to put in um, it will take few months to a couple of years uh, to get proper hands-on into the uh, on the on the on the programming side of it, right? Uh, but we have seen people coming from non-programming background picking up um, uh, Python in a matter of two to four months, two to five months as well, uh, and creating whole working um, uh, trading systems, not just the trading um, strategies itself. But it does need a huge amount of effort and a lot of pain and a lot of frustration and a lot of happiness when things work so uh, so that's all part of um, learning any skill but more so a uh, programming a uh, programming language as well so so that's um, there so typically um, the epad program like i think i see a few questions uh, on the chat as well around this the epad program is 6 months so it does not say that okay at the end of 6 months if you are coming from uh, zero background in statistics and programming and um, uh, trading, you will reach to expert level at the end of six months. No, uh, but before the start of EPAD program, you get exposed to the different um, uh, uh, primers and a lot of study material and the guidance which you get uh, from the team before it starts. And once it starts, then you have uh, six months which are totally dedicated uh, towards um, uh, towards picking those skills. If you have zero background, you need to have some build some background even before enrolling or um, uh, before the batch starts at least right so so that will be there uh, the resources are there but you have to spend some time on that and um, later on during the uh, spread of six months you get a structured um, inputs or structured uh, instructions from the knowledge gathering perspective uh, which makes sure that you reach a certain level right so if it is one to six level uh, or layers you reach at least two or three or four, right? So depending on uh, what your background is. If you already have a background, then you are expected to reach level six directly um, as an over the, over the period of six months. So that's there. Uh, but yeah, uh, the idea is to structure learning um, uh, and the guided learning helps you cut across the learning curve um, by a few times, uh, at least as compared to doing it um, in an unstructured fashion. So that's, that's the idea of the program anyways. Okay, uh, I want to start training in FNO by leaving my job. What are the basic requirements of infra besides skill? Um, I think there are a few links that uh, probably the team can uh, share or we can share uh, with the participants, uh, interested participants separately where we talk about what is the kind of infra that you need. Uh, but if you don't have proven models or a proven ecosystem in place already, then it is not suggested that you leave your job and uh, uh, start trading FNO and especially FNO for the international participants. It's uh, uh, for the global participants. It's FNO is uh, futures and options, a uh, very common nickname uh, in India. Uh, but um, um, but FNO, um, if the the futures and options is uh, slightly more trickier, the leveraged products. If you don't have a trading background, I do not recommend. Unfortunately, most of the people do start uh, from that, especially in India, but that's not um, an advised um, uh, place to start with. Uh, features and options, it's way more trickier as uh, it looks. Um, and uh, it's better to start off with, um, uh, with, with the equities and then move on to FNO as you get a better understanding into the, uh, into the financial into the of the financial markets and of the uh, of the trade of the domain basically okay um 
I heard that a master's or doctorate degree in financial engineering is the exclusive path of entry to algorithmic trading. Is it true? Uh, in uh, developed markets, absolutely, uh, for the big firms, uh, in the direct trading roles, okay? Now, if you are looking at, there are lots of different roles which are available and uh, lots of different types of firms which are available. So we do see uh, the the firms which are, uh, 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 which are, uh, operating in the HFT space or in the Algo and Quant space, they do um, uh, look out for the non-MFE uh, guys, non-PhDs uh, as well uh, in their in their uh, setups. It all depends on what is the requirement of the firm, right? So, so if the requirement is not something which needs a PhD level understanding of the theoretical uh, understanding, then no, if it is more hands-on, more practical, then they might not need that. Uh, if it is more on those lines, then yes. <coughs> Sorry, so that would be needed. I'm 16 year old, so uh, old in the UK, and would love to become a quant when I'm older. What things can I learn um, uh, or do to make me stand out more as a candidate? As I said, statistics, financial computing, and quant trading and financial markets uh, um, understanding. So these are the three things that you need to master on. And uh, you start at 16. I'm sure if you uh, it would be the right time to uh, evaluate whether uh, your love for uh, the markets is true or not. But never mind. It's um, you are very young and uh, you have a lot of time to experiment and try things on across the domain. I, on a candid note, I would not. Even though we are into algo and quant trading and we are talking about algo and quant trading, um, I would definitely suggest that. Uh, please do try out other things as well. At this age, it's important that you get exposure to different aspects, be it uh, hardcore technology or um, uh, data science or, uh, um, or marketing or many other things which are there. Do uh, give, a, give a try um, to all these things and uh, see if, um, uh, if, if the financial markets are really are calling. If it is, wonderful. Uh, we would be really glad, um, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, I think that's uh, that's my uh, suggestion that to try out and get exposed to as many um, uh, things as possible. So that would be really helpful. I'm currently pursuing MBA in finance and I'm fascinated by algo trading, but don't have a coding background uh, nor proper uh, marketing market experience. I want to know about the job opportunities I can pursue in this field after the uh, algo course along with my current MBA. So as I said that uh, if you have uh, the skill sets, uh, especially those three things, then uh, there would be certain opportunities which can come across uh, for you to get started on it. And um, as you develop more and more, so coding is something that you will uh, you will need, right? So so it's not something that you can do away with uh, if you want to succeed in this domain. Most of the traders, even in our own uh, setups, uh, uh, all of almost all our traders do have a very uh, decent level of understanding of coding, and they do create their own uh, strategies as well, right? So so develop their own strategies. Um, so that's important. Even if you're going to just manage people, um, you need to have a decent understanding of coding because uh, you will need to communicate that to your coders, right? So you need to, um, uh, both of you would need to understand and get into each other's shoes. So that's important. So, so that's the end. The, what are the career prospects for someone who has experience of 10 plus years in the industry? So, um, so that's, I think, um, uh, most of the people in the industry do have more than 10 years, honestly. In fact, most of the people who do EPAT program, they are typically five years to 25 years of work experience. Um, so uh, so that's there. And uh, we do see that uh, the biggest challenge that comes in is that if you don't have any background in this domain and you are looking to make a career in this domain and you have a significant amount of work experience, you're already see pretty senior, then I think the challenge that comes in is that uh, the opportunity cause that you might not be the skills if they are not relevant, um, at least not visibly um, relevant for uh, the Elgor Quant space uh, from the hiring firm's perspective. And it can be challenging in terms of whether you um, have to give up some opportunity cost or not. So that's the challenge. But uh, what generally works is that uh, to take up freelancing projects or uh, work on few things where you are coming um, uh, you are contributing to the open source ecosystem or uh, some way where you are able to showcase that what you are doing and try things out as well and then uh, pitch for uh, that that switch uh, using the collective 
um, uh, skills that you already have as well as the skills that you have learned in this spe specific to this domain as well.